Hey everyone! Hello! Welcome to the green room for episode three. We've got green curtains this time. <laughs> we are. Um. Yeah, we've we brought you into the music room, the, the studio actually, where <laughs> most of our magic happens when we're actually putting stuff down as the last inklings. Yeah, so this is the space that we've, we've kind of dedicated for discussing episode three, which was out last week. Yeah. Um, Featured Dr. Sarah Hodge from Bournemouth University. Who is a cyber psychologist. Which is like a completely mad concept, really. But we found amazing. out what that means yeah. now. And yeah, my takeaway was kind of the, it's the interaction between us as humans, and then there's like this interface, uh, which could be a screen or something, mm -hmm. into the digital world. And it's kind of the, the study of that, that interaction, that permeable membrane yeah because there's a lot of ethics philosophy psychology that gets folded into to using all this stuff and it's yeah yeah it's a, an evolving field it's it's quite it's a kind of an thing. emerging yeah. science isn't it it's like they're a lot of these cyber psychologists are collecting all this they're harvesting the data for their research and they've got some really really interesting insights already so it's it's a fascinating field because <laughs> it's not been with us for that long when you when you when you actually stop step back and think about it mm. something even take the advent of social media which is well within our lifetimes yeah we, we're not quite digital natives for like no, we kind of facebook we straddle straddle the the uh, the two eras don't we yeah like i can well remember winding things back into cassette tapes <laughs> and hoping that they still played uh and putting up bits of tape on them to record but at the same time i'm pretty good with me old tech yeah well no i say that i think i'm quite good at using it but i fall down a lot of holes where my use is problematic probably i think you're a lot better than me i i think i used to be a bit of a technophobe well i think i am but I think I've gone too much the other way, which is like part of the reason we mm. had uh, Sarah come to talk to us was to investigate some of this, because I feel I use it in a slightly unhealthy way sometimes. Yes. It's, it's a perfectly great work tool, but yeah. I, I definitely fall down some of the holes that we were talking about. Yeah, we had to be quite quite structured with ourselves in this interview Yeah, uh, with, our, with our special guest. So broad, so broad. You think of all technologies yeah. and all of the different stuff you could have spoken about. It's a big topic. Yeah. Like even outside of the scope of the recording that you'll have heard on the podcast, like mm. as we were having a cup of tea and having a warm up and then packing up at the end, <laughs> so many subjects that there's just no way you could fit into forty five minutes. It's fascinating stuff. So yeah, we had to be quite regimented with ourselves, and we we kind of uh, we took it upon ourselves to focus in the first half of the effects of uh, things like screen time yeah. and how you use all these platforms, um, and that was. That was fascinating in itself, wasn't well, it? Yeah, because we get a lot of pop psychology headlines, and this mm. was kind of the stuff we wanted a proper expert to help maybe back it up or dispel some of these things. Uh, like we asked about uh, this blue light thing that we read about all the time. Have mm. a nice filter on your phone, take away the blue light, and you know you'll sleep better because it does all sorts of things to your circadian rhythms. <laughs> and actually, um, Sarah was saying it's reasonably fresh, like research-wise, but mm. it's more about the contrast of the lighting that we're using when we're maybe looking at a phone and we're sat in a really dark space yeah and that's doing yeah. weird things the way we perceive it um so like for me the bad habit there would be i hunkered down on the sofa and i'm working from a smartphone the most terrible posture you can imagine and you know <laughs> it gets dark around me and i I'm, I'm not doing the right thing there necessarily yeah i remember discussing um that we, we've kind of broached the subject of tech addiction as well yeah and um like the I, I can't remember what, what phrase was used. It was something like positive stimulus or yeah. like a dopamine hit you get when, when you see somebody's liked your post or something like that. And and because it's such an, uh, an emerging science, we're not sure whether it is tech addiction. Is it an addiction that was raised? Like... If that's just a, a way of communicating that feeling or yeah. it kind of feels like it fit. It could fit into that box in, in certain extreme cases. Because we said... Uh... Addiction like behaviour, I think, yeah. was something that was kind of mentioned there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, that, that brought with it ideas like um, infinite scroll. I was going to say doom scrolling, but infinite scroll was one of the ones we covered. I, li I like doom scrolling. It's that, yeah, isn't I mean... it? Just some of these platforms bringing in this ability to endlessly go. Um, and get distracted as well. That's, yeah. That was a, a big takeaway from, from undergoing some of these, um, these awareness building rituals almost yeah, yeah. Um, of using some of these tools and finding out what your actual usage is against your perceived usage because there of there's often a massive disconnect between what you think you're doing and what you're actually doing yes because like, it's very easy to 
I don't know, we use Facebook for work stuff because we use it as a marketing tool as well. Yeah, yeah. Do some work and then it's a weird kind of barrier because it's now a social space as well. So someone mm. could message you as a friend just to catch up. The yeah. distraction is quite present when you're on the tech. And then it's thinking, okay, that's fine. Mm. I, I can differentiate, I can do a bit of work, do a bit of socializing. Yeah. And then like even Sarah was saying this about herself, in my head I've gone, oh, that was just like five, 10 minutes of social chat. It's crazy. And when you actually step back, we were talking about flow states, getting into that space where you have no idea how long you've really been doing that mm. for. And then, so, like I would recognize that I definitely waste a bit of time. <laughs> and like Sarah was saying, download an app or check what your phone's got mm. just to track how yeah. much you've been doing it. Cause actually I have since the podcast looked at my data. <laughs> and what surprised me was the, the magnitude of the difference. Yeah. Like I thought it would be, I knew it would be more than I thought it was. Yeah. Like if, if I thought uh, I'd spent 10 minutes doing something, it was actually 20 minutes. Yeah. But it wasn't. It was like 40 minutes or an hour or something. The magnitude of that yeah. disconnect is is extreme. Well, I use Twitter sometimes for kind of shout outs for stuff that we've been doing. Like yeah. Big wise. Yeah. Uh, or the podcast. Mm. So the, the irony of that. But um, <laughs> And I would thought to myself, because there's a lot of political interest happening on Twitter, obviously, as you can imagine. And there are certain people I follow and I kind of quite like. Maybe it's not, I'm not wholesomely into that, <laughs> but I like the comedy element. Um, and I thought, yeah, I, I probably have wasted like half mm. an hour, 40 minutes doing that during the day. Two and a half hours of my day <laughs> I had apparently wasted on Twitter. So, Well, you don't know that it's wasted. It's just it's just unfocused yeah. on, on yeah. your original task. It's not it? what I intended to do. Exactly. But yeah. then this is what Sarah said to us. Yeah. It's about judging, do you think you've got a problem or something? Because mm. if what was her example if you're someone who is a professional gamer yeah using technology and then switching to a different mode when you when you finish with your nine to five gaming yeah, you just flip a switch to be like on social media <laughs> yeah it's different and if you don't think that's an issue it's not yeah in, in some ways yeah I, I don't think i can flip the switch that that easily no i'm thinking like for me it's it's like screen time or non-screen time yeah rather than this specific bit of screen time versus another specific bit of screen time yeah i can't really uh switch that like the context change is is too small for me to register yeah i'm often i crave like natural light i think that's a big thing for me mm, like yeah. just getting out and away from any screen yeah but it goes both ways like yeah. we could be doing something completely social and it's so easy to fall into the trap of mm. i could just check my emails now because i've got access to it well, this is what we were discussing as well in the the second half of uh, of the episode was kind of uh, how how do you um, register this sort of awareness yes. with accuracy and what yeah. what can you do and 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 also the ethics of using technology to monitor your technology use <laughs> yeah because it that goes out to such a big scale where you've got like tech giants yeah. people creating platforms for use online social media platforms and stuff we're talking about. Mm. And in theory, they don't really have any responsibility to support us as an end user in having a healthy amount of time on those platforms. But at the same time, uh, like as we said, their no... yeah, their primary aim is to keep us there exactly. for the advertisement money that mm. they get. <laughs> and is there a, a good amount of time to be online? Like that's so subjective that they could yeah. probably say, well, you know, it's not our problem. That's the difficulty. If it was, if it was, you know, cut and dry, uh, you're allowed to spend five hours a day. Um, yeah. You know. Uh, looking at, uh, at any type of screen or whatever. Well, because we do that for kids, maybe, like on the iPad or something. Yeah, and then after that, uh, maybe it's time to have a break and, yeah. and reset yourself, and then you've, you've, you've recharged and have... But it's not that cut and dry, is it? No, it's, and, and we've identified that there isn't somewhere out there with mm. that information for you. No. Like, it might not be being looked at by the tech giants to support you as an individual, mm. but if you were a kid, there would be resources that you could be directed at. Like, there's probably... a kind of BBC version, for example, yeah. that has best practice. Like, Try not to do it too long, get regular breaks. The other thing is I, I don't have a sense of whether it's getting better or worse either. Mm. It just seems to be like you're in that sphere and yeah. you're not sure whether what you're doing is right or wrong. And it's like, is this good for me? I'm not sure. I can't tell. Because yeah, we've done <laughs> things that are useful before. Like, It's really great to be in contact with people that you wouldn't normally be able to be in touch with. And yeah, it's great yeah. to share information. Like, yeah. I love um, boards like Reddit, for example. I like mm. d discussing interesting topics. And like Stoic philosophers would say, I've fallen into the trap of information for the sake of information. Yeah. But it's so easy to do. Like, mm. is that good? Is that bad? 
yeah the yeah. ethics like yeah this is what what we kind of wanted to to talk a little bit more on if we had the time yeah. in the episode was kind of the ethics behind you know if there's a platform that you don't necessarily agree with their data sharing agreement or the way that they you know their, their model works or something but you're being forced to use the platform um kind of the ethics the, the morality around perpetuating that through usage yeah is uh it's difficult to vote with your feet because so often <laughs> yeah. there is a necessity or it feels like there's a necessity to use something as a things. musician it, there is i think i yeah. feel like there is because yeah, there's no other valid. way of of uh advertising your shows or you know th th that's become the primary method now so yeah 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 if, if that's where your audience is you're kind of uh you're, you're forced to use that aren't you but the darker side of that is now we're on these platforms so often and they have been created curated in a really uh, careful way to make sure like you say we're staying there to be subject to advertising which we're also sort of doing to people but that aside <laughs> some of these algorithms which have been you know created by very clever coders yeah based on behavior patterns it would be lovely to almost have a whole podcast to talk about do those algorithms then affect our behavior mm. so is it kind of yeah, coming full yeah. circle are I we being trained mean. by the algorithms this is funny because the more you look into it the more sinister it feels yeah like with the uh the advent of these dark algorithms which yeah. is a term I absolutely love. <laughs> oh, like dark UX, it dark user quite experience. Po poetic, yeah. in a way. Oh, there's probably some beautiful poetry in that. Well, yeah, yeah. I, th I feel like I'm now an agent of this. Like I'm a minor mm. part of the army of Sauron. Like, because <laughs> it's filtered down to the point where I'm part of this Illuminati. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, maybe you can use the disconnect to kind of uh, to your to your advantage. Infiltrate it from the inside <laughs> yeah. and then become one of them. That's, that's how it feels though. Like oh, yeah. You get a little bit good at it and it feels like, ah, oh, this is a great tool. It's achieving the end. Kind of borders on sci-fi, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Like the only difference here is that I'm not doing it like Minority Report and like doing everything on imaginary screens. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all on your phone. It's it's all down there, yeah. <laughs> oh, It'd probably be, be much more comfortable to do it in 3D <laughs> space. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, there's so much to talk about. We, you know, we could we could go on for ages. Oh, we could. I think if we had the opportunity to do, you know, follow-on episodes, uh, that would be something we would look forward to. Yeah. Um, As it is, yeah. uh, aid with the streamlining. Next week we are speaking to um, Misha. Misha, Misha Weston Green. Green, who is a digital marketing expert. Yes, he's got 15 years of experience uh, and that's running his own business as well in marketing and social media management. Yeah, it's going to be a, a whirlwind episode of uh, lots of different hints and tips and facts and yeah different ways of using all these tools yeah we're hoping this is kind of like to help you streamline because uh as the title of the show says and something we covered with sarah sometimes this whole attention thing is based on the fact that you've only got so much bandwidth to achieve certain things and hopefully misha can help us uh, tidy up how much of our bandwidth we use for certain marketing exploits yeah so this is gonna i think episode three with sarah was very was quite theoretical in a way, yeah, wasn't very exploratory. it? And uh, Misha's episode uh, coming out in episode four, it's going to be a little bit more practical. Yeah, this is get your workbooks out kind of time, <laughs> I think. Yeah, so if, if that's your thing, um, then yeah, please do check it out um, in all the usual places mm -hmm. on our socials, on our newsletter, and all the rest uh, of it. Lastingthings.co.uk, there is a page for the podcast there, so you'll find everything you need. And we'll get some further resources up there too. Thanks for listening. See you soon. See you soon.